I did something incredibly silly and created a 40 inch driver. What's happening Panda Nation? Peter Von Panda here. Hey, I've got my driver here and I've actually got a couple of drivers that will look awfully similar because I did something stupid. I actually created an incredibly short driver and the reason is numerous, but let me explain. So this is the standard Callaway driver. This one is actually 45 and a half inches, which is the standard length for a driver. It's kind of what you get right off the shelf. This is the Callaway Maverick Max. It's a head that I've been using for a while and I really like it. And this is a regular flex graphite shaft. And one of the things that I've always struggled with is hitting drivers straight. I've always tended to fade them, sometimes badly slice them. That's why I use the Maverick Max. This one is weighted so that it is draw bias. The 14 gram weight is down here. You just switch those. And that has helped me in many ways to kind of play a better shot. Now, I still have to work pretty hard at the tee box to control this. It tends to spray all over. And one of the reasons that it does that is it's really long. And for me, my height, as well as my hand to floor distance is pretty low. So what ends up happening is that instead of kind of a natural golf swing, I feel a little bit more like I'm taking a baseball swing because I feel like I'm kind of drawing the club around horizontally because it's so long, right? And in fact, I have choked up on the club a little bit, usually about an inch to help kind of take away some of that length and that's helped too. Now, one of the things that I have been fooling around with all summer long is single length golf clubs. Now, my Cobra irons are all single length and that has done a lot to help me kind of just be consistent in my game. And for some of us who are just kind of your occasional golfers, we don't take it too seriously. You just wanna go out and have a good time and you wanna remove as many variables as possible so that you can just be as consistent as possible and enjoy the game as much as possible. You know, they are a great option. And I thought, why don't they make woods in a single length? Now. That would probably be kind of hard, especially when single length irons are somewhere in the 37, 38 inch range to make a driver that short. So there are a number of things that go into it when you start shortening clubs. You need to usually add some weight down on the head to increase the swing weight. You want to kind of lighten up the grip. You are changing the flex in the shaft and there's all sorts of variables that go into that. Not to mention driver lie angles are not the same as a seven iron lie angle, right? So what I did is I did a bunch of reading and I did something really, really stupid. So I actually got another Maverick Max. Now this is the exact same head as in here. The only difference is that this is a nine degree loft and this is a 12 degree loft. And the reason I did that is I wanted the same head, but when you start shortening up the shaft, you usually need more loft on the club to get that launch angle to be the same. So even though I'm using a nine here and a 12 here, you know, this actually might not launch it as high. The other thing I've done is played with the hosels. So I have added two degrees to both. So even though this is a nine, it's gonna play like an 11. And even though this is a 12, it's gonna play like a 14. And I'm hoping that I can get the launch angle high enough with this one, even though I've shortened it. And I wanna show you here how dramatic this is. I'm gonna just line up the hosels. Now take a look at the difference in those shaft lengths. That is a five inch cut down. It's basically a 40 and a half inch driver that I've created here. You can see that, right? They are lined up there. Look at how different those grips are. I mean, that is kind of crazy. And I'm using an ultralight or the wind ultralight grip here to help kind of get my swing weight on the shorter club up. So I'll kind of explain what I've done on this. Now, basically I'm gonna call it a 40 inch driver because that's pretty close to what it is. Look at that, I can get the whole thing in the frame here. So what I did is I cut the shaft down. I actually had to put, I probably could have gotten away with four wraps of tape, but I actually had to put five wraps of tape here just to kind of get the grip to fit the shaft, you know, to a place where I think it feels secure. So I had to add some more tape there because you're cutting down the shaft, you're kind of getting to the narrow part of the shaft and so I had to build that up to get a grip on. Ultra light grip here to help, again, get the weight down on the head. I also ordered some aftermarket weights for the Maverick here. So I have an 18 gram up here and I think it's like a four or six gram down here. And the 18 gram is not a standard weight from Callaway. The largest that it comes with is 14. So I wanted to add as much weight down here. What I didn't want to do is before hitting these and trying them out, do anything with lead tape and kind of fool around with that. The other thing I've done here is I've gone with 
a A shaft, so kind of senior flex shaft. And the reason is when you take a shaft like this, even though this is regular flex, and you start cutting it down, you just have less shaft, and so it becomes technically stiffer. So I thought if I go to an A flex shaft here, cut down five inches, I'm going to reduce the amount of flex that it has and hopefully make it more of a regular shaft. All right, so I did that. Now, I didn't stop there because the craziness has just begun. And I actually got another shaft, but this is a lady flex shaft because I thought, well, maybe the senior flex becomes a regular flex and maybe when you are shortening up the shaft, you don't get as much club head speed, or I'm saying you don't get as much club head speed. Maybe I need actually more flex just to try to get as much club head speed out of my shots as possible because you know, you just don't have the radius that you do with a longer club, right? So, you know, if I'm swinging this club and this club, you know, same swing and my arms are moving at the same speed, this club is gonna go a little bit faster because of the extra distance that it's traveling. Now, one thing that I was reading is that the club head speed actually doesn't vary quite as much as you might think, especially if you go down an inch, Usually there's very little difference in club head speed. If you go down five inches, you're gonna to start to notice it. But what I'm really hoping on this shorter club is I would be really, really happy if I could get more consistency, straighter shots, and I could get 215 to 225 yards of carry. That would be great. I know I can get that out of this club here. And you'd say, well, you're not getting more distance out of there. I just don't have the swing speed for it. I have a very, hmm, consistent swing speed of about 85 miles an hour. I can kind of push it, but then I start spraying it around. But if I can be more consistent with the shorter club, maybe I can start trying to add in some speed. So anyway, that's why I went with the two flexes here, the senior flex, the A flex, to try to get a little more flexibility, a little bit more whip in that shaft and see if I can pick up a couple mile per hour, you know, just by using the shaft. But that's why I'm also trying the lady flex as well. Now I could do some stuff with lead tape, but I didn't want to go full bore on it. I didn't want to do anything that's going to be hard to remove. You know, I just wanted to see what the effect of shortening it up dramatically was going to have. Now, I also don't want to just eyeball it and give you some estimates of what the differences end up being. I actually want to go to the simulator and get some real data. Now, I am not a good golfer. And so one of the things that's going to happen here is if I take 10 shots, I could get some wild freaking shots and just look at what I'm consistently getting with the long driver and then with the short driver and then also look at the dispersion can we say that a 40 inch driver might be something that you want to consider i don't know i'm not even sure that i want to but that's why i invested in two club heads to try it out for you and for me so let's get to the simulator and give them a try all right i spent a couple hours at the simulator and i was kind of surprised at the results here. So it was actually a little hard for me to figure out what to make of them at first. But one of the things that I did was obviously I started with my long driver here, my 45 inch driver, and I hit it just about like I expected. It's a flatter swing it feels like to me. So it feels a little bit more like that baseball swing and I hit it as well as I could. And you know, it went all right about what I expected. And on average, I had 188 yards carry and 210 yards total. I had a dispersion of almost 30 yards, which wasn't a surprise. And they were almost all to the right. They were playing pretty big fades. Now I can weight the club here with a heavier heel weight and kind of draw that back in. But I don't like putting too much weight on there because it kind of screws everything up. But that's why I picked up the Maverick Max to help with that slice issue. And when I went to the 40 inch driver here, and you can see how much smaller this is, I actually thought that this might be a bit of a joke in that I didn't know that I was going to hit it as far as my hybrids. I will say I did not hit it that far. And I did try it with the senior flex shaft as well as this ladies flex shaft to see if there were any differences there. I thought maybe a little bit of extra flexibility would give me some more club head speed. And I would say that basically I didn't pick up or lose much club head speed between the 45 inch driver and the longer driver. Now, what probably isn't a surprise is that this 40 inch driver did tighten up my dispersion by quite a bit. In fact, it was less than half of the dispersion of the 45 inch driver. But 
I did lose distance. In fact, instead of having a 210 yard shot with my regular driver, I actually ended up with 192 yards total with this driver. Now I did have some shots that were over 200 yards in total distance, but I wanted to use some averages here. So between those, I did lose about 17, 18 yards on average going from the 45 inch to the 40 inch. Now I also played with the loft here because I was a little worried that I might not be getting enough loft, which is why I used the 12 degree head here and I dialed it up with the two extra degrees all the way up to 14 degrees. And I actually found that adding more loft really didn't help me that much here. So I did have ball departure angles ranging from 14.2 to 17.8 degrees. And I did find out that my ideal distance was captured with about a 15 degree launch angle. Now, here's the other thing that I realized is that when you have a shorter driver, you stand a little bit more over the ball. It's kind of almost like hitting an iron. And I had an average angle of attack of negative 5.5 degrees, which means I was hitting the ball on the downswing instead of a typical driver shot where you might hit it on the upswing and have a positive angle of attack. Despite that, and I'm not the mathematician here and I'm not totally sure how this works, but despite the fact that I was hitting it with a downward angle, without a lot of loft, it was coming off the club head face, you know, about 15, 16 degrees. So, that actually wasn't that bad. I thought it would be a lot worse. I thought I might have single digit launch angles and end up losing a lot of distance because of that. The other interesting thing with the short shaft here between the A-Flex and the ladies uh, shaft was that I consistently pulled these to the left. Just a little bit of draw on them. That actually mimics what I was seeing when I played with these on the course. And it was the same thing in the simulator. Now, because that dispersion was tightened up, basically I was putting them at center or just left of center. And they were very much fairway finders. So I would see on the screen, fairway, fairway, fairway. So despite the fact that they were a little bit shorter, they were much, much straighter with tighter dispersion, which was nice. Now the other reason that I think I was hitting them left is that these are both Maverick Max drivers, which means they are draw biased. And one of the things that I did for a couple of shots was just take out the heel weight completely. And that actually seemed to allow me to shoot some pretty straight shots. Now I put the lightest weight that I can in here, which is a two gram weight. And what that ended up doing was kind of drawing it back to the left just a little bit. So if I could play this club without the two gram weight in there, I think that might actually give me some really straight shots. The problem is, is it leaves a hole in there and I don't want water or debris or anything to get in there. So I do want some sort of weight in there. And unfortunately, I can't put a counterweight on the other side or anything. And so you are always with the Maverick Max going to have a bit of a draw bias there, which isn't necessarily a huge problem, but I really would like to kind of dial this in. I'll talk a little bit more about that in a second here. What I really realized was that the distance was a factor of my club head speed. Now you would think that the 45 inch driver right here, I would be getting significantly higher club head speeds than with the 40 inch. But I felt like I was swinging all of these about the same and I was basically getting the same club head speed. Basically, I was swinging at 80 miles per hour. And the reason I think that is, is because I think I'm holding back a little bit with the longer driver because I'm trying to do more to control it and to hit the ball in the center of the face. I think that even though I would lose a little club head speed with this shorter driver, what I'm doing is I am feeling a little more confident that I can control that swing paths, so I'm swinging a little bit harder with it, which is why I'm getting an 80 mile per hour club head speed with both of these clubs. Now, that is really the big problem here of why I'm not getting the distance that I would like. And that's because you just need to be up in 85, 90, 95 mile per hour to kind of get past that 200, 215, 220 yard distance. So I think I can increase my club head speed more confidently with this shorter club. And I actually have my bamboo stick. I kind of dusted that off and I've been using it a little bit here. I'm gonna see if that can raise my club head speed. But I think it's more about my timing, my release being off as opposed to the club itself. So I really love the tighter dispersion, hitting the fairways, and the fact that I know that I'm losing some distance, but I'm making up for it in confidence and consistency. And I think that with a little bit of training, I can get my timing down 
and maybe pick up five, 10 miles per hour more on the club head speed. And that will really put me kind of in that distance where I wanna be. I don't need to have big distance, but what I really am looking for is consistent drives off of the tee so that I know I can clear some obstacles or I need to lay up those types of things. So as opposed to my 45 inch driver, you know, sometimes I would hit it 180, sometimes I would hit it 230, but it just wasn't predictable enough. On the 40 inch driver, it was just so much more consistent that when I get up to the tee box, I, that I know I'm gonna hit it straight. And now if I can dial in my swing speed, I'll know how far I'm gonna hit it too. So I think that's a big advantage. Now, the other thing that I learned here is that I would like more adjustability to the driver. Because of what I was seeing here, I actually don't know that I want it draw biased with the short driver. And the problem with this is I was kind of looking all over for what would be the perfect driver. And to me, the perfect driver would allow me to either draw or fade bias it and maybe customize where the weight is. Now I did see, I think there was a tailor made that had a sliding weight up here and a sliding weight back here, which would kind of do that. Um, but the other thing that I would like is a driver that would be a slightly more upright. So this has a 59 degree lie angle and you can adjust it a little bit by going to like a draw bias with the hosel here. But I would love something that's more upright. Now I did find a driver that would do that and I'm pretty excited about trying that out. I'm hoping that it's a pretty forgiving driver. Instead of 59 degree lie angle, it's a 60 degree lie angle. It has the weights in all four areas, but it wasn't inexpensive. It was the only one I could find like that and it's by PXG and it's called their 0811X prototype. And so I did order that and I'm hoping the adjustments there allow me to really start dialing it in. If that doesn't work, I can tell you that this Maverick Max with the 12 degrees on a 40 inch senior flex shaft is pretty incredible. I actually really, really dig it, man. It just makes me feel pretty confident when I get up there. Um, I was hitting them really consistently. It was kind of funny to be able to see them just kind of consistently do a slight draw to them. I mean, it actually made me feel pretty empowered. And so I really like it. So I was shocked that I could take a driver shave it down as much as this and still make it playable and i think that with a few more adjustments i might actually have a driver that isn't just a glorified hybrid and i think with some more adjustments here i might actually get a driver that gives me some respectable distances from really a shorty short driver and not necessarily embarrassing shots that you might think you'd get. If you want to experiment with it, I might suggest it because so far, even if I ended right where I am right now, I am really impressed with this. Hey, if you want to pick up the Maverick Max, I'll put links to them in the description below. Peter Von Panda, out.